Hello everybody and welcome to this video about magnetic vector potentials. It comes up frequently in textbooks on electromagnetism, so it is deserving of being treated as a real quantity. Its main use being in advanced physics to derive the magnetic field using the Lagrangian. It isn't a real quantity that can be measured, but we'll be exploring it as though it was and using four examples to explore it and find typical values for it in the real world. Its symbol is the capital letter A. Nobody really knows why. Its units are volt seconds per meter or newton seconds per coulomb. The trouble with A is that it can be lots of different values since it has gorge symmetry. That means that if one value can be obtained for A, then another term called nabla s, which is the gradient of the function s, can be added onto it and it will still be a value for A. To get rid of this term, it is necessary to set div A to zero. This is like saying that there aren't any magnetic potential charges around for it to have a divergence, just like B so it will be much easier to work with as though it was real. We'll be using cylindrical coordinates since we'll be using a lot of cylinders like solenoids, rods, tubes and wires. Just like using I, J and K coordinates for up, right and forwards, K, S and C are used to show directions relative to a cylinder. K is the unit vector parallel to the axis while S is the direction away from the axis and C is the direction circling the cylinder. S and C change, however, depending on the location of the quantity in X, Y, Z space, but they can still be treated as functioning unit vectors. The first example and the simplest is the A field as it twists around a magnetized iron rod. It is very easy to compare it to the magnetic field twisting around a wire that conducts an electric current. To solve for A, we first invoke this equation that defines what A is. This equation can be transformed into this integral equation because it is equivalent to it. It is another way of writing the first equation. To describe what it does, we take a cross section of the rod, shown in yellow, and draw a circular loop around it. The first integral, which is a circular integral, is equal to the length of the red line, which is 2 pi s. The second integral, which is an area or surface integral, is equal to the amount of magnetic flux contained inside this red circle. It isn't the entire area of the red circle, because all the flux is contained in the rod. This quantity is phi b. So we substitute these quantities into the equation to give this new equation. We make a the subject of the equation and thus find what a is. Its direction is around the rod. The next example of a is to find its value inside an iron tube with the magnetic field twisting around it and not going along it. It is like the magnetic field inside a solenoid. We firstly use these two equations like we used them before for the last problem. To solve it we draw a rectangular loop that is parallel to the tube and cuts through it to go forwards inside it and backwards outside it. The circular integral is equal to the length times a of the loop. The surface integral is equal to the flux inside the loop. Like in a solenoid, the A field spreads out to be extremely thin outside the tube and may be made equal to zero. Thus the line integral CD outside the tube would be equal to zero because A is zero. The A field is constant inside the tube and is equal to A in a forward direction. 
This is because the height of the segment can be raised and lowered without changing A. The line segments BC and AD are equal to zero because they are perpendicular to A. The line segment AB is equal to AL because it is the product of A times the loop length L and A is constant and parallel to L. So the circular integral is AL. The surface integral is equal to the flux inside the loop, which is the shaded region. It is equal to the area L times W times the magnetic field B. The surface integral is thus equal to B times L times W or B L W. Dividing both sides by L gives us the solution. The next example is a solenoid. The magnetic field is constant and parallel to the axis and the A field circulates inside it around the axis in the same direction as the electric current. To solve for A we use the following two equations as we've used them for the previous two examples. The circular and surface integrals are taken like as before as in example 1. The line integral will be the same 2 pi s times a being the length of the loop times a. The surface integral will be equal to the entire surface inside the loop with the outside magnetic field discarded due to symmetry. The flux inside the loop is therefore equal to b times pi times s squared. We can then substitute these quantities into the equation as shown. Then A can be solved for the strength of the magnetic field in the solenoid. A can be determined from the current and turns of wire per unit length. The last example is the A field in the presence of a copper wire conducting a current of I. This will need a different approach since B varies everywhere. Just like in the last three examples, we will use this equation to start to solve for A. Since B curls around the wire, it only has a component in the C direction circling the wire, so that only this part of the curl of A in cylindrical coordinates is used. A doesn't vary over the length of the wire due to symmetry, so its derivative over this direction, which is the z direction, is set to zero. Substituting equation 3 into 2 gives us this new equation. Substituting equation 1 into 4 gives us this equation. This is the value of the magnetic field as a function of the current in the wire as a vector circulating around the wire. Substituting this equation 6 into 5 gives us this equation. We may integrate equation 7 to form this integral equation. Solving the integral gives this equation for A in terms of I and S and it contains a logarithmic function. It also contains a gauge invariance function f. We'll choose to ignore this function based on the assumption that there are no magnetic vector potential charges to be found close by. Since there is only a component of A in the z direction due to symmetry, then we may rewrite this equation using vector notation. This equation isn't much good for isolated distances from the wire because the log function doesn't work with units, especially with units of length. But a good property of log functions is that they work well with ratios. The function can find the potential A between two different locations away from the wire. A good property of logarithms is that inverting the number inside the function changes the sign outside it. Now supposing for example if one location 
is 3.1 times as distant from the wire as the next. Then A is equal to this amount, which is an algebraic quantity times 1.131. Now it's time to look at some typical values for A as found in everyday life. The first example here is the value of A that circulates around a long circular magnetised rod. The rod has to be long enough and the location of A has to be close enough to the centre of the rod to remove end effects so that the equations work accurately. The value of A around this given rod and at about 5 centimetres away from the rod is what we're trying to find. We'll use this equation here that we've derived earlier to calculate the value of A. Substituting all of the values in, we get this result for A. And using engineering notation, we arrive at this more easily read figure, roughly being around 2.5 microunits. The next example is the magnetised iron tube. It isn't that common to find tubes like this, but they aren't that hard to make. Using the equation that we've derived earlier, we see that it's a very simple equation compared to most of the others. Substituting in the values, we get this value for A. And converting it to engineering notation, we find that A is 50 microunits which is roughly 20 times larger than the A found around a magnetised rod. The next example is finding A inside a solenoid. It varies with the distance from the central axis. We use the equation and it is very simple, but not as simple as the one for a magnetised tube. The variable S represents the radius of the circle marked A. And substituting in all of the values, we get A is about 30 microunits, similar to the value found inside a magnetised tube. The last example is that of the potential difference between two points at varying distances away from a wire conducting an electrical current. This is the equation and it looks nasty because it has a logarithm function in it. Substituting the values in gives us this value of about a hundred nanounits, the smallest so far. But all these values of A are hovering around the 100 nano to 100 microunit zone. 